and welcome to space. Now, all year we've had unique access to the team behind the Rosetta mission as they fly out into space and then put the Philae lander down onto the surface of the comet. Let's see how the comet hunters are getting on. It was D-Day for Rosetta and Philae, Wednesday the 12th of November, a day the comet hunters will never forget. The day they landed on a comet. I was relaxed yesterday and now it's that, that exponential increase into stress and excitement is there. And uh, yeah, I'm on the, uh, the up now. Show us your tattoo. Oh, okay. Well, I have shorts on for the very reason there. So yeah, that's my prediction for today. That's how confident I am. Extremely stressed, extremely stressed. The night didn't go as smoothly as I was hoping. Uh, it was the lander preparation activities took much longer. We had to redo things. But then the good news just flowed. Rosetta had a signal from Philae. <laughs> and then a few tense hours later, We've landed on a comet. It's the day after, and the live TV crews are packing up. In the ESA control room, the team are trying to find Philae on the comet after it bounced twice and landed in a dark crevice. But it's sending science data, and that's what counts. Ça va? Ça va, ça va très bien. I'm great. We landed on a comet. <laughs> During the main phases around separation, AOS, when the lander was, uh, sig signal when the lander was going down, there was, of course, excitement, but uh, definitely was not comparable to the moment we observed touchdown. I started crying. I think all the tension of many, many months and years of work were released in, in one go. <laughs> so so it, was, it was a huge achievement, definitely. Of yes, today, yeah, yeah. there were three really intense moments. There was the separation itself, which was already really critical, as we couldn't know in advance if it had worked. Once the separation was done, there was the acquisition of the signal from Philae. And then there was the landing, which was really intense. At that moment, we didn't know if the lander would survive, and it did. We have data, we have science, it's extraordinary. Meanwhile, at the German Space Agency in Cologne, it's all smiles for the Philae team. It's a magical moment to know that their baby is on a four billion year old comet. You have them bond bonded together for so long a time, and after that, it's like a child uh, who can say, can wave goodbye to the mother, I'm grown up, I'm going on my own way. It was incredible. And then it, it's been uh, one after the other, everything, everything is exciting. Amid the excitement, there's urgency too. Battery life is short and they must work fast before Philae runs out of power and goes on standby. We have uh, communication between Philae and Rosetta uh, once per comet rotation, so we have about 12 hours in between communication slots. In this time, we have to decide how to proceed so that we prepare the commands and we uplink them to Rosetta and to Philae when there is contact. So this is really now on a step-by-step -step basis. So what, what have we achieved? What is the battery status? How much energy do we have left? Um, what are the next steps we're going to take? Philae sent back these stunning photos. They're images that could change our understanding of comets forever. It's coming from the comet. It's coming from the comet. And that's important because scientists believe ancient comets may have brought water and the building blocks of life to planet Earth. This is a quantum step in what is it that we are living in here in this environment. And uh, so there's a lot to learn. We want to learn about the, uh, the material strength, so how a comet is built. 
and understand from there so how it was formed long time ago in the early days of our solar system. Now, information gathered by Rosetta and Philae is being processed and analysed, and groundbreaking results are being promised. Science isn't instantaneous. You have to make sure your decimal point is in the right place, for instance. And so soon, in the next few weeks, we should get some of these results out from the first, our first impressions of the comet and some of the, uh, targeting some of the big questions that we, we pose and why, why we're there in the first place. From a weird rubber duck to a place Philae calls home, this is now our comet. Soon it will change as it heats up and begins ejecting massive amounts of gas and dust. The comet is approaching the sun, so we perfectly know that we'll activate more, and at a certain stage, we will not be able to orbit properly the comet anymore. We don't know when this time is. Maybe it's January, February, March next year. We don't know yet. <laughs> Rosetta will keep on scrutinising the comet until 2016, while Philae's fate is uncertain. It may be in hibernation now, but with more solar power, it could come back. Philae is uh, on top of the comet and will remain there. Uh, and of course, the comet is getting closer to the sun, so it can happen that we can finally charge the secondary battery again and start uh, with, our, with other operations. The comet hunters are on an incredible journey and they're taking the world with them. Their comet is hard, icy and strange. Their story is warm, human and inspiring. Rosetta has something that I feel that no other mission has. I, I can't really describe it. I work on it. I live the mission a little bit too much from my family's point of view. But there's something about the comet, there's something about this alien landscape that, that's going to evolve in time and the fact that we are so far away, we're over 500 million kilometres away, it takes like half an hour to get there. This feeling that there's a man-made object next to this alien landscape, it's just, yeah, it blows your mind and I think that's, that's the thing. It's, it's there and wow, it's a wow factor. With Philae and Rosetta grabbing all the headlines, it's easy to forget that there are plenty of other space missions out there. So let's have a look at some more news from the universe this month. A British group called Lunar Mission One wants to crowdfund a flight to the moon. Contributors will be able to send digital time capsules with the probe when it launches in 2024. The International Space Station now has its first 3D printer. Researchers believe additive manufacturing could be used to create new kinds of space hardware in microgravity. And this new animation from NASA shows how carbon dioxide is emitted and then transferred around the globe by air currents. The satellite data gives a global view of the carbon cycle. Well, that's it for now. Next month, we get right back down to Earth with the tricky business of the politics of space. See you then.